Honorable Chief, to share the word of God. Praise the Lord. I want to use this opportunity to welcome everybody in our administration today. I want to thank God for... I want to thank God. I want to thank God for making you to follow us in administration today. Today is a special day. We all are alive today to worship God in today's service. Okay, let us pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for an opportunity like this. We thank you for your grace, your mercy upon our lives. We thank you for your children that are following this ministration. We worship you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of life. Thank you for your children that are connected to this program. Anyway, you are following us. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is there to touch you. Father, I thereby pray that you release your power, the power of the Holy Spirit. Release your spirit upon us. Release your spirit upon your children as they are serious to follow this ministration. May you touch their lives in the name of Jesus. Father, may you touch them that they will never remain the same. Father, let them be touched from above. Let them be touched from above. That place where you are following this ministration, Receive the touch of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit of God touch you right there where you are in your bedroom, in your parlor, following our Sunday service today. Receive the touch of the Holy Spirit. Receive the touch of the Holy Spirit. May your life never remain the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to tell you, beloved people of God, that today it is by the grace of God that you are alive today. I welcome everybody in this forum. Uh, Sister Messrin, I welcome you. Uh, Sister Ratana, I welcome you. Brother Jean, Brother Moses, uh, Brother Metinus, Brother Stila, and Roxanne. Roxanne, please put on your video if it is possible. Roxanne, right? Please put on your video if it is possible. So that we can also identify oh. you. Yeah. Yeah, put on your camera so that we can identify you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to also welcome Mrs. Jean, Mama in the house. Yeah. Mrs. Jean, we welcome you. Hello. Yes. God bless you. God bless you. So I welcome everybody. I want to tell you that today is a Holy Ghost service. That Holy Ghost is going to touch you today. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you will, Holy Spirit will give you interpretation. Holy Spirit will teach you. Holy Spirit will make you to understand our message tonight. So, our topic today... Okay. Our topic today says... God is looking, is searching for a man. God is searching for a man. Tuhan mau atau tajuk khutbah sermon Tuhan hari ini Tuhan mau mencari mencari seorang apa? Amen, kayak itu kawan. 
Okay, let us take uh, our reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 8. I read it, so you read. Let me read. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell these people, Keep on hearing, but not understand. Keep on seeing, but, not, but do not perceive. I want to tell you that despite the greatness of our God, despite that our God is so great and powerful, despite that our God created heaven and earth, despite that our God is the almighty God, there is something that God is still searching for. There is something that is so important to God which he is still searching for in every family, in every community, in every country, in every continent. God is looking for something, something that is so precious. God is searching for something, something that worth more than the whole world. And what is that thing that God is looking for? God is searching and looking for a man. God is looking for someone that he can lay hand on. God is looking for a man that he will use to communicate to the people of the world. God is looking for a man that he will use to manifest his power here on earth. God is looking for a man who will take over and maintain the work of his hands. There is need for a man. There is need for a man. God, because there are many people that are available, there are many people that are all over the world looking for how to be useful to God, looking for a way to serve God. Because of it, God, instead of him to lay hand on anybody around, he decided to spend time to search for a man. From where we took our reading, Isaiah the prophet, when God opened his eyes to see the glory of God, when the Spirit of God revealed himself to Isaiah, Isaiah, after receiving great encounter, after having a great encounter with God, Bible said that Isaiah had a voice in the kingdom of God, in the place of glory, in the house of God, in the temple of God, Isaiah had a voice. Isaiah was so uh, determined and so willing to see the glory of God. And God revealed his glory to him. In the glory of God, when he's still in the realm of the spirit, Isaiah had a voice, had the voice of God saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? Can you help to interpret a little? Uh, continue to preaching. After you preaching, I will, uh, uh, I, will, I will explain to them. Okay, so Isaiah had a voice. That voice is the voice of God. Isaiah had a voice. That voice is the voice of the Most High. And what is that voice saying? Who shall I send and who will go for us? There is need for somebody that God will send to some communities. There are men and women that are needed. The kingdom of God is in need of men and women. The work of God is in need of men and women. Who shall I send and who will go for us? The angels of God in heaven, the glorious uh, 24 elders in heaven, the, all the glory of heaven, they came together and they, are making, they were making a great demand. Who shall we send and who will go for us? 
Who is that man that God will send? Who is that woman that God will send? Who is that young man that God will send? Who is that young lady that God will send? I want to send somebody into the world. I want to send somebody to represent me. I want to send somebody to be my worker. I want to send somebody to preach my word. I want to send somebody to manifest my power. I want to send somebody that will represent me. Who shall I send and who will go for us? This is a serious demand from God. Who shall we send? We are in need of men. Though there are many people, for example, you that are following this ministration from Malaysia, there are many people in your country, there are many people all over your country, they have been there looking for a way to serve God. In Nigeria, where I am bringing this message to you, many people are in Nigeria looking for a way to serve God. In other countries, in America, in Europe, in Israel, other countries of the world, there are many people that are in the world looking for how to serve God. But yet, God made a demand. I am still looking for a man. That man will be a helper to the people of the world. I'm looking for a man who we can be able to carry my message. I'm looking for a man who has burden for what I want him to do. I'm looking for a man who I will pay at the end of the service. I'm looking for a man who will have me in his mind 24 hours a day. I'm looking for a man who I will show the secret things of the Bible. I'm looking for a man who will comfort the heart of the heathens so that they will become children of God. I'm looking for a man who can pray and there will be end to coronavirus. I'm looking for a man who can pray and somebody that is blind will see again. I'm looking for a man who can preach and many souls will give their life to Christ. I'm looking for a man who will bring revival to the people of the world. I'm looking for a man who can carry my word to every part of the world. I am looking for a man. You see, God is not even looking for two people. God is not even looking for 20 people. Sometimes we are so carried away with the number of people we see in our churches. Sometimes we count success by number of people coming to our churches. Sometimes we count success by number of people we see in a crusade. Sometimes we count success by number of people we are seeing in the church. No, God is looking for one man. If there is one man that is according to God's heart, if there is one man that will be ready to represent God, God is comfortable. Today, what we are seeing are denominational workers. What we are seeing in our churches today, in our countries today, we are just denominational workers. I belong to this denomination. I am an Anglican. You are talking only because you are an Anglican. I am Catholic. You people are Catholic. We are Anglican. I am Pentecostal. I am this. I am that. We are fighting for denomination. We are working for denominations many a times. But God is looking for a man who is not only standing for denomination, who will stand for the word of God. Who will stand for the people of the world? Today, we are territorial Christians. We are Christians based on our nationality. We are Christians based on our countries. We are Christians based on our, our, our people, you know, our country, Nigeria, Malaysia, and other countries. We are people based on our individual countries. But God is looking for a man who can break the barrier of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of countries. We break the barrier of other uh, limitations. We break the barrier of tribalism, uh, ethnic uh, differences. 
a man that can come just like Jesus Christ. Jesus did not come projecting any country. Jesus did not come projecting any kind of a, a denomination. Jesus came as the Son of God for the people of the world. He came as the light of the world. And John the Baptist said in the book of John chapter 1 from verse 36, Bible 35, 36, Bible said, Behold the Lamb of, the Lamb of God, number one, who takes away the sins of the world. So Jesus is not known by any country. Jesus is not known by any government. Jesus is not known by any uh, uh, ethnic group. He is known as the Son of God in heaven, number two. He is known as the Savior of all the people in the world. So Jesus has his origin from heaven. He has his mandate on earth, not on any quarter, not for a particular country, not for a particular denomination. Jesus is Savior of all. God now started making this request. I'm still looking for a man. A man that will be extraordinary. A man that will be able to touch people from different countries of the world. A man that can cross the denominational barrier. A man that can cross country barrier. A man that can reach souls of men. A man that can be able to have communication with men. A man that can be a solution to men. And Bible said, Isaiah, who heartedly, Isaiah, without murmuring, Isaiah, without any kind of fear, stood up and said, Here am I, sent me. God, I am that man you are looking for. I am ready to go and represent you in every country of the world. I am ready to leave my own message, to leave my own understanding. I am ready to drop my own mentality to carry your gospel to the people of the world. My God, my Father, I surrender myself. Here am I. Use me. Can you see? Isaiah discovered the nature of life. Our life on earth is vanity. Our life on earth is nothing. We are alive today, tomorrow we are no more. We see ourselves strong today, tomorrow we are sick. Tomorrow we are down. How old are we? The more we, our age is coming up, the more we are going closer to our grave. The more your age is coming up, the more you are preparing to depart from this world. So because of this, we have a serious challenge. That challenge is how to use your life to say, God, here am I, use me. God, I surrender to you, use me. God, here am I. I want to give you my age. I want to give you my life. I want to give you my destiny. I want to give you my tomorrow. I want to give you my future. God, here am I. Use me. I need you in my life. Here am I. Use me. I need you in my spirit. Here am I. Use me. I need you in my soul. Do you know that the God of heaven, the merciful king, the ancient of the days. Do you know you can surrender yourself to him? Isaiah, despite the need of his family, despite some challenges in his life, he said, God, here am I, use me. God is looking for a man. In the book of Matthew chapter 9 from verse 36, but we say, when Jesus saw the multitude, as they were moving like sheep without a shepherd, he said to them that harvest is plentiful, but laborers are few. Pray to the God of harvest that he send men into his, he said the vineyard, into the harvest. You see, Jesus said we should pray for harvesters, that the harvest is ready, the harvest is ripe, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. God in search of men, God in search of laborers, God in search of instruments that will serve him. Today, what is your condition? You want God to bless you? You want God to heal you? You want God to, to change your life? You want God to prosper you in your career? 
you want God to bless you in your families. But I want to ask you, what have you done for God? Isaiah did not spare his life. Isaiah did not show that his life is more important to him. Isaiah said, here am I. I surrender all. Use me. The remaining days of my life is for you. Use me. You are the owner of my life. You created my life. You created my strength. You created everything in me. Here am I. Use me. Isaiah surrendered. Isaiah said, God, use me. I am no longer alive because I want to live. I am living to do the work of God. God is looking for men that will, number one, accept him as the Lord and personal Savior. God is looking for men that can give their time to follow him, to hear his word, and to grow in him. God is looking for men that can hear his word and tell the people. You will not look at the faces of the people. Bible said when you go to them, don't look at their faces. You will not be afraid of what they will say or what they will do. You preach the word of God to them. Isaiah said, here am I, use me. Here am I, send me. I will drop my own message and carry the message of God. The message of God is the message that enthrones righteousness. The message of God is the message of love. The message of God is the message of reconciliation. The message of God is the message of peace and unity. The message of God is the message that brings salvation of Jesus to the people of the world. The message of God is the message that carries the power of God. Isaiah said, here am I, use me. Do you know that God is looking for you? You are looking for God and God is looking for you. Can I talk to you that whatever you are looking for is also looking for you. Whatever you are looking for in life, whatever you are desiring to have in life, whatever that is your heart desire in life is also looking for you. Isaiah was looking for God to see the glory of God without knowing that God is also looking for Isaiah. God is also looking for a man. Isaiah was so desirous, Isaiah has the burden to see God and his glory. And God is also making every opportunity available to see Isaiah. God is in need of you. I want to ask you a question. Do you know that God is in need of you? Do you know that God can use you and perform mighty works? Do you know you can be instrument in the hand of God? Do you know you can save the people of the world? Do you know you may be the, the, the savior many people are waiting for? Do you know that many souls of men are waiting for you? Do you know that before you die, you need to make heavenly impact. Do you know some people are sick because you have not prayed for them? Do you know some people are still dying in evil because you have not preached to them? Do you know that there are some people that are hungry because you are the one to feed them? God is looking for a man. The only thing you need to do is to hear the voice. Once you hear the voice of God, the next thing you will do is to say, here am I, use me. In a time like this in Malaysia, God is looking for a man that will stand and pray and say, God, deliver us from COVID-19. You can see the number of cases we are having today. You go to Kuala Lumpur, you see their own. You go to Sabah, you see their own. You go to other districts in Malaysia, you see that the cases of COVID-19 is increasing every day. You, you take the statistics of the number of people that have died, you discover that there are many people that have died of COVID-19. Now, some years ago, some years ago, in the other decade, men, when they come out of the sun, the moon, they will be looking at it. And one day, they had a particular idea. We want to go to the moon so that we can be able to study the environment this, uh, the, the environment above. We can study the moon, the stars, and the solar system. Man made a decision, and they started looking for men. 
that we go to the moon. If a man can volunteer himself to go into the moon, a place of zero gravity, some, some people like Armstrong, the first people, American scientists that travel to the moon through Apollo, first Apollo mission to the moon, somebody like Armstrong and other of his uh, crew members, they, they said, American people, here am I, here are we, send us. That time, technology was still developing. They were still building some rockets, building some capsules. They were still making some research whether life can exist in the moon, whether men can fit travel to the moon. They were making the research. After their research, they started looking for a man. They said, we want to send men to the moon. How can we send men to the moon? We are looking for people to send to the moon so that they will go into the moon and they fix the flag of United States of America. Some people came first. Some people like Armstrong and other scientists, they volunteered themselves. When it is time for them to depart, before they move out, before they travel to the moon, somebody like President Kennedy, the former president that was assassinated in the U.S., he was the person, the brain behind the Apollo mission to the moon. He had it as a target and as a burden to send men to the moon. So now when it is time for men to volunteer, some people volunteered to go. They have decided to die. They have decided to end their life if it requires that they will not come back alive. They were moving by faith that we can make it. We can make America great. And by the grace of God, they went to the moon. They successfully made the first uh, uh, movement in the moon in a place of zero gravity with a dangerous and the hazardous environment. With, with, uh, they were exposed to some uh, particles of the atmosphere. Yes, they decided to make it in the moon. They fixed American flag in the moon and they later returned back here on earth. If a man can make a decision to go to the moon, to move around the moon and to walk in a place of zero gravity, to go there and move about in the moon and still return back to earth, what about you? Which risk have you taken for God? Which mission have you volunteered yourself to go? Now they are saying that they want to send men to the red planet, the Mars. And people are signing up application that they want to follow. They want to send men into the red planet. That is where those people will stay and die. I think they are projecting like year 2025 to send set first set of people to the Mars. Those people will go there, but they will not come back again. They will go there to start developing life. They will start there to develop another life in another planet. So, and there are thousands of people that are applying, that are ready to leave this world, that are ready to leave their families, to go and live in the mass, another planet. Now, if man can take risky to go and live in another planet, that place is a place of zero gravity, you cannot remove your oxygen mask. You cannot remove your, your, your suit. You cannot remove every of the, the equipment you are using. You are there only through the help of the, the capsule and the, the, the oxygen mask and the other scientific uh, suits you are to put on. You will spend all the rest of your life because once you go to mass and step into the mass, you may not come back here on earth again because of the contamination, because of the differences in atmosphere, because of some infections. So those people that will be sent to the mass, they will stay there all the rest of their life. So if men can volunteer to go and die in another planet, if men can volunteer to go and spend their life in the mass, if men can volunteer to visit the moon and also aspire to visit the mass, 
What about you? Can't you volunteer to use the rest of your life to serve Jesus? Don't you know that it is more honorable that you use your life and serve Jesus? Isaiah said, why am I alive? Here am I, use me, God. I want you to use me. I want you to use me. Though I am a sinner, though I am weak, I cannot pray, I cannot speak English, I cannot do read the Bible, but I know you will teach me how to do it. Here am I, send me, God, in search of a man. Heaven in search of a man. Who is this man heaven is looking for? It is a young man. Heaven is in need of vibrant young men. Young men that can conquer the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus. God is in need of you that is a businessman, a businesswoman that can be able to earn money to eat, to feed your family. God is in need of you to enter into the vineyard. When there is demand in heaven, everywhere is always silent. When there is demand in heaven, angels are always silent, waiting for consolation. Who is that person that can console God? Who is that person that can answer this call? Here am I, send me. What are you going to do? You are going to bring men from darkness to light. You are going to bring hope to the hopeless. You are going to bring light where there is darkness. You are going to bring solution where there is no solution. You are going to raise the dead, someone that is dead already. You are going to heal the sick and cast out devils in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are many things God can do through you. Don't neglect yourself, that place where you are. God can make use of you. Just rise up by faith, believe by faith. Ask God, here am I, use me. Once you open your mind, once you open your heart and receive Jesus and receive his call, he will give you another life. That life is called eternal life. You will have a share in the kingdom of God. God of heaven is looking for a man. The book of Luke chapter 15 verse 10. Bible says that there is joy in heaven over a sinner that repents. There is joy when a soul repents. When a soul answers the call of God. When a soul decides to listen to God. When a soul decides to follow God. There is joy in heaven. We want to pray. I want you to have a little meditation. Do you know that God can make use of you? Do you know that God can make use of you? My sister, give it a little interpretation. God can make use of you. Talk to God and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender myself to you. I need you in my life. I need you in my life. As my Lord and personal Savior. Here am I, Jesus, use me. Here am I, Jesus. Use me. Use me. Use me. I want to be your child. I want to know you. I want to serve you. I want to surrender myself to you. Somebody make it your prayer. Ask Jesus to help you. Minta Tuhan untuk menolong kamu. Ask Jesus to use you. You are ready for him to use you. Kamu sudah mendengar cebaran firman Tuhan. Ya, saya telah dipanggil. Dan sekarang kamu minta Tuhan untuk kamu diutus seperti ya saya. Ask Jesus like Isaiah. I am ready to serve you all the days of my life. Minta Tuhan Yesus untuk uh, seperti yang saya katakan, saya bersedia untuk me, uh, melayanimu sepanjang hidup saya. Make it your prayer, Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. Tuhan Yesus, saya menyerahkan hidup saya kepada Engkau. Confess your sins before God. Ask Him to forgive you. In any way you have sinned against him, ask him to have mercy upon you. Segala dosa kamu di hadapannya dan meminta Tuhan Yesus untuk mengampuni segala dosa. Ask him to have mercy upon your life. Minta Tuhan untuk memberkati kehidupan kamu. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Doa dalam nama Yesus.
Can you say, Lord Jesus Christ, the remaining years of my life, the remaining of my years on earth, I will serve you. The remaining years on earth I have, I have given it to you. May I be a servant of God. May I be an instrument in the hand of God. Make it your prayer. The remaining years of my life, the remaining days of my life, I surrender myself to be your servant. Yes. Menyerahkan kehidupan saya menjadi hambamu. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. If you want to give your life to Christ, if you want to give your life to Christ, you want to accept Jesus as a Lord and personal Savior, place your right hand on your chest, let us pray for you. If you want to accept Jesus as a Lord and personal Savior, yes. If you want to accept Jesus, can you say, Lord Jesus, come into my life? Confess your sins. Ask him like Isaiah. Here am I. Minta Tuhan Yesus masuk dalam hati kamu, mengakui segala dosa kamu seperti yang saya lakukan. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Berdoa dalam nama Tuhan Yesus. I want to pray for you. Lord Jesus Christ, I commit these souls to your hands. Bible said that there is joy in heaven over a sinner that repents. We are sharing this message online. As many that are following this message and that have decided to give their life to Christ, to accept Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, Lord, I pray that you touch them. Lord, I pray that you forgive them in any way they have sinned against you through the words of their mouth meditations of their hearts, have mercy upon them in the name of Jesus. Father, write their names in the book of life. Just like Isaiah, may they decide from their heart that you, they will make themselves available, that you send them. Send them into the world to win souls for you. Send them into the world as children of God. Send them into the world to bring solution to the troubled world. Send them into the world that they become a blessing to this world. For I send them to move from one country to the other to share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Put in them the seed of God, the seed of the life of God, the spirit of God. May you possess them in the name of Jesus Christ. For I pray for a mighty touch upon your children. I pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I pray for the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the word of God that you have had this hour bring life to you in the name of Jesus. Let it bring restoration to you. Let it bring healing to you. Let it bring deliverance to you in the mighty name of Jesus. God is looking for a man, a man that we pray and miracles will happen. God is looking for a man, a man that will convert unbelievers. A man that can convert the heart of men. A man that knows where God is going. A man that has the vision for the kingdom of God. Father, raise men in a time like this. Even in the city and country of Malaysia. Raise men, O oh God, that we preach the gospel. Raise men, O oh God, that we represent you. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 For our raise souls that will serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to pray for people, those that are sick, those that are in need of the divine healing of God. Anywhere you are, we are praying for you. If you are sick, you need God's touch in your life. You need the healing of God. You need the miracle of healing and deliverance in your life. I want you to now, can you begin to ask Jesus Christ to touch you whenever you are sick, whatever that is wrong with you, present it before God, ask the Holy Ghost to heal you, make it your prayer. 